Welcome to Knock Pro Nation. Welcome back guys, Jarrell here. And I am Josh, and today we're here to discuss the Magna and Yumiko backstory that we recently got in episode five of The Walking Dead. Yeah, we got more information. It um, was interesting. Actually. It was. Yeah. So uh, the Walking Dead has so you, uh, Magna and Yumiko have been together for 13 years, and we got a lot of information uh, for their backstory uh, prior to the apocalypse, which actually started back in season nine. It was teased in season nine. We got more information in episodes four and five. Yeah, and it actually kind of gives a little bit of information as to why Magna is the way she is, and mm -hmm. and and kind of it takes a while for her to gain that trust and we get it here in this this conversation that they have Yumiko and Magna. Yeah, so back in season 9 episode 6 when Magna's group was being introduced, they were uh the, the the council was being convened and they were deciding whether to let the group in. So when they were going through and asking the group minus Yumiko because she wasn't there, um what they did prior to their life, Magna mentioned that she was a uh, a waitress in a truck stop. Now they didn't let Magna in due to uh, Michonne noticed tattoos on her hand and arm that pointed prison. to being in prison. Mm -hmm. So we just assumed that, okay, Magna possibly went to prison. That's where she got these tattoos. Now we got a little more information um, in episode four of this season, Silence the Whispers, where in a conversation, an argument with Magna and Yumiko, Magna mentions that she says, you're not my lawyer anymore. So then we get, okay, it seems that Yumiko was possibly her lawyer back dirt prior to the apocalypse with this possible crime that Magna did, and she defended Magna. Yeah, and, and that conversation kind of pours over into the next episode where mm. when Yumiko and Magna, Magna have this conversation, Magna says to her, look, that look that you gave me, you, you gave it to me 13 years ago when you thought I was this evil person you know i'm saying in layman's terms but in magna's point of view she she always she can't get this this lawyer image out of her head with regards to yumiko almost like hey you're my lawyer you represented me you are you're always judging me yeah so we got that magna was jailed for acting as a vigilante against a man who committed a sex crime against her young cousin she says in the episode my cousin, she was a little girl, and he gets to go on living his life. No way. But nobody came for him, so I came for him. How many people have we killed, Miko? And st and still that look right there. So when, so yeah. Yumiko, being her lawyer, had no idea that she killed this man. Yeah. And did you did you the pick look that on her face? She is realizing this for the first time. Yeah, did you pick that up? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. she, Magna actually just, because the line right before that was Yumiko saying, I was there representing someone who I believed was innocent. Was innocent. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Then Magna comes forward and says that, and you see this look, and I thought Yumiko started crying. Pretty close. Um, Tearing up realizing that Magna did indeed kill this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, uh, Eleanor Matsura, who was on uh, Talking Dead, actually did say that um, it was really heartbreaking for Yumiko. She says the whole relationship has been based on the idea that that's been the truth. And finding out that, I don't know if it's so much as lied, but let me led me to believe that that was the truth. And maybe there's a certain element of I wanted to believe it too but it's really turned my world upside down. It's less about the crime itself, like Magna says. We've killed so many people by this point, and we're so far into the apocalypse, it's more the lie itself. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's perfect. perfect that, that is perfect sense, right? Yeah. Because, like, in, in Magna's defense, like, this dude, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but probably deserved what he got, right? Uh, I mean, you, you sexually abused mm -hmm. someone close to her. And he gets away with and it. And he gets away with it, and yeah. no, not in Magna's eyes. Now, so, But she lied to y Yumiko about that. Who was and, defending And, and her, that's right. what hurts the most for Yumiko, right? Exactly. And, and we get her point, meaning, you know, being in the apocalypse, yeah, they've probably, everyone has killed probably a lot of human beings. But it's just the fact that... You know, we don't know when their true relationship started. When did they become an item? You know, was it before that? Was it after the apocalypse? So it's just the simple, the the, the, the lie itself mm -hmm. that she did not tell Yumiko the truth, that she actually killed this no. man. Even though she went to prison for it, they probably found other things. But, 
you know, it was probably during the trial. Well, you got the sense, but that she never Yumiko, admitted to her lawyer. Yeah, you you got the sense that Yumiko tried everything she could as a lawyer, right, and as a friend, probably during the trial and everything, mm-hmm. to fight for her freedom, right. Um, and here you're realizing all of that was just faux, right, yeah. because of the fact that she really did kill him. And right. you know, I think in the end of that conversation, she tells Magna to find a different place to stay. Yeah, I, I just think up, I remember that. She's but, just upset. And I, well, absolutely, I, yeah, she should she's be. She's very but, upset. Um, it's definitely a, a, an interesting dynamic between the two. Uh, it's really great. Uh, and it adds kind of a, a great value to that that relationship. Like, they're, yeah. they're going to struggle. Like, <laughs> it, I mean, it's a power struggle right now. This all began because... You know, Yumiko had better ideas for when they were, uh, when the tree came down and they were getting attacked by walkers. But I get the sense it started way before that. Like, I get the sense it's always been been this struggle between them. And that's why Magna still doesn't trust people. That's why she stole the supplies at the hilltop. But that's ridiculous. She doesn't trust it. I hate that part. But, you know, it's just a really cool another layer of getting backstories of characters prior to the apocalypse. We don't have a lot of the characters that we've known. Uh, yeah, we have some, but we don't get a lot of backstory. But we didn't really get this kind of value to stories like before mm-hmm. Angela Kang. Right. Like mm-hmm. it just seems like we're getting more more depth to these characters now. Yeah. And that's what I love about especially, it. Especially um, getting more because these weren't in the comic books. Yeah. You know, we didn't get any backstories in the comics. Now in the comics, that's a different medium. You're not going to get a ton because you're Absolutely telling a story. Yeah. But just the fact that we can, because we're comic book readers, we can relate to the character in the comics, relate it to the TV show, and then say, oh my God, this backstory, that's freaking amazing. Yeah. That's just great. And yeah. I love, yeah, like you said, the work that Angela King and the writers are doing to give these backstories to certain characters. Having some not have any at all is cool. It leaves the mystery out there. But um, I thought that was great. And I think the dynamic between these two, I hope, should continue to grow. Hope they can get around their differences. And, uh, you know, I think they will when... Uh, there's going to be an eventual war coming, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I, I definitely love this this episode, this scene, mm. uh, the dynamic between these two individuals. It's yeah. it's great, and I can't wait to see it unfold in future episodes. So uh, let us know what you thought of the Magna Yumiko backstory that we received in the last episode. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit that bell notification so you're always notified when we upload new content. Follow us at Facebook at Not Pro Nation on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Josh. I'm Jarrell. We're Not Pro Nation. We're out. out.